Greetings, friend. I hope you're sitting uncomfortably, <laughs> be it on your sofa, armchair, or beanbag, if that's how you choose to live your life. The new Compact Presario is a home computer that has everything you need to run your own business, including a built-in answer phone, including a built-in answer phone, including a built-in answer phone, including including a built-in answer phone, a built-in answer phone. And facts and facts and facts and facts. So this is the Compact Four Slash Fifty Pro Linear. We have the floppy drive there, the CD drive by Creative and the on-off switch on the right. And we're going to do a quick clean and refurbishment. We're going to use some poor man's baby wipes. If they're good enough to clean a baby <coughs> they're good enough to clean this machine, I reckon. So let's uh, grab a nice moist cleaning towel. These mostly contain isoprop alcohol, so they won't do any damage to the case or the components. The alcohol will dry very quickly. So just get off some of those stubborn marks and stains. Cue the fast forward there. I know how impatient some people are. Well, to be fair, it's not particularly interesting watching me wipe a machine. So just get in all those nooks and crannies. Just give it a quick clean so I feel a bit more happy about uh, handling this. Also, in some ways, I feel a bit like a cat marking its territory. Okie dokie, and round the back. Okie dokie. And there we've got the voltage selector. And there's the power supply fan at the back. Voltage select to 110 and 240. The keyboard and mouse PS2. We've got some serial and parallel ports. And over here we've got a pain in the neck VGA port. And those are the ISA slots. So the VGA port's a bit of a problem. I'll come to that a little bit later. So let's derobe this bad boy, have a look inside. It's all very clean and tidy actually. Just needs a little bit of a clean up. There's the Sound Blaster 16 PCI card. That will also be used for CD-ROM. Down there where you couldn't see my finger, there's the CPU. And we've got a plethora of cables including five and a quarter inch, three and a half inch and obviously hard drive cables. Being a 486 we won't be using SATA or anything as modern as that. So we've got a bay here where the hard drive sits. Actually quite a nice little idea. So almost down the middle there's kind of a bar that we're going to unscrew here. And that has the board for the ISA slots and also enables us to get the into the hard drive bay and also the RAM chips are behind there. Give it a little bit of a brush with my brush there, get some of the dust out. There's the floppy drive and CD-ROM again. The CD-ROM is nice but very yellowed. Floppy drive, I don't know if it works yet, but we'll find out. And there's me pointing to the CPU again. Cables are a little bit grubby but very easy to clean. They tend to hold and um, get dust on them, but uh, it's no big deal to get those off again with some baby wipes or equivalent. A bit of a brushing just to get some of that dust off. No rust, looking pretty good, no leakages so far that I've seen. Give the card a bit of a wipe over as well and also the power supply at the top. Not really much to see or tell you. Dust. Uh, 
Okay, so I was pointing there to the mounting that we're going to unscrew. Again, not a lot to really say. It's all quite logical, really. Nice design, I've got to say. I do like this compact machine. And I love 486s for some reason. This one's a little bit slower than the last one's at 50 megahertz. And as you saw in the description, 20 megabytes of RAM at the moment. I may or may not put more in, I'm not sure yet. So you can see that I'm using a very powerful magnet to hold the screws that I remove. That saves them from falling on the carpet and going up the hoover. That does happen to me quite often. So three screws to undo here. Fascinating stuff. Put those on the magnet. And there it is. I believe that magnet came out of a hard drive, but um, can't be sure on that. came from the scrap store where I get most of my odds and ends and including this machine so thanks again to Project Reboot for that. Here is the original hard drive that came with it which is a little bit over 500 megabytes. That's plenty for my needs at the moment. And it has the track cylinders and heads labelled of course as all hard drives do. Won't need to mess with jumpers we're just going to use that as the primary drive. Later probably in the next video I'm going to do a compact flash edition as well but for now I just want to see if the machine works what does what doesn't there's a couple of issues I need to deal with later in the video you'll see that can't resist just uh, one more quick wipe there Okie dokie, so let's show you the Sound Blaster 16 card, it's a huge long card. Pretty much the same thing that was in the last 486 video. I think they were pretty standard at the time, with the joystick port and input and outputs, 3.5mm three, sockets. I don't have the drivers for this yet, and I haven't tested it, so that's for probably the next video. But uh, that's the card, and these are the ISA slots here. There's the CPU with the fan on top. I did think about removing it to show you, but it soldered on, in fact. Give that a bit of a dust as well. So you've got a couple of um, bigger chips in there. And this is the BIOS battery, or CMOS battery, which is very similar to CR2320. I suspect it's dead. There's a very good chance it is, so let's get the multimeter. See if there's any voltage at all. And not looking like, yeah, it's barely anything in there at all. Not surprising at all, to be honest. Now, removing this actually became a bit of a pain. Um, why they couldn't just sock it a nice bit of cheap plastic and let the battery go in and out with your hands, I don't know. Basically, it's attached to the board itself, not soldered, but sort of welded. It's a bit of a very odd design. It does work, but changing the battery is an absolute mare. Uh, in the end, I kind of had to hack it out because I didn't have any kind of battery holder. And I didn't really want to take the machine completely apart to get the board out. So, well, I'll show you later what I did. But uh, the CMOS at this time is dead and that causes some problems as we'll see in a moment. A handy little light there. That light I bought um, was less than £10, has a magnet on it. 
and uh, it's fantastic for inside of PCs and things. So a bit of a clean up of the ports there and just wipe off some of the dust or some of the chips. And here's the VGA or SVGA socket which has got one of the pins blocked in as you can hopefully see which meant none of my VGA cables would go into it. Now I did do some research and you could buy an adapter if you can find one. You could drill with a small drill the missing hole so the pin would fit but in the end I just found an old cable and just cut the pin off and that worked fine. Quite nice here you've got the jumper settings actually um, inside the case itself for the motherboard that's a very nice touch. So we're just going to check some voltages before we power on make sure chance of explosion is minimalized so quite simply pop the red in the red and the black in the black should have a positive voltage of around 5 volts and we have just over so that's absolutely fine 5.1 nothing to worry about now we'll just check and see if we've got 12 volts and all oh, blimey almost spot on in fact as close as you can pretty as, as I've ever seen to be honest not bad at all I've got no problem with this uh, using this machine power wise it all looks absolutely fine and dandy okay time to actually see how the machines doing As you can see the monitor does work, just needs a few seconds to find the signal. And we have start with the RAM check. It's a little bit slow to be honest. At this point I didn't have a keyboard so we had to sit through it. Delicious sound of the floppy drive. And we've got a 162 error. So the BIOS is looking to take some settings off the hard disk. And it's not finding a disk present at the moment. That's because I haven't connected it properly yet. Basically I wanted to make sure it booted OK and was worth carrying on with this moment. So what we can do with this machine is just skip the error. and just check it goes as far as it should. Right, and so here I've got DOS 6.2. What I'd like to do is see how it responds to that and make sure the floppy drive is actually working. I did think about cleaning the heads first but decided I would take a gamble and it's paid off. So I've got the keyboard in now, which is a PS slash 2 keyboard. So we can skip the memory check. It's still quite slow to boot, but... So it's now found the hard disk as a Type 65. So if we hit F1, we can save the settings, even though the BIOS is um, dead quite a nice feature actually so you can skip past even if you haven't got a BIOS battery. As you can see MS-DOS is starting up from the floppy disk. There's our Microsoft blue screen but not of death but of life. So at this point it didn't want to format or see the hard drive properly and after thinking about that for a few moments I realised I'd have to get the BIOS working with a battery. But we know the machine is all well and good including the floppy drive now. We also know it's detected the hard drive even though it's refusing to install the OS. <laughs> So 
So here's the close up of the BIOS battery again. It's hard to describe it, but it's all welded together. So I did manage to get that battery changed with a temporary fix. And now we are formatting the hard drive, and DOS 6.2 is happy to now be installed. So what I basically did was remove the battery and put in a CR2320 and just forced the contacts together just temporarily just to see if it would accept the battery. It's a slightly different battery. And here's the Windows installation which is going to take a little while. Okay, so rebooting the computer one more time. So work on DOS machines does involve a fair few reboots. I don't mind, it gives me time to slurp my tea. Okay, so let's see if MS-DOS is installed on the hard disk and it has successfully. So now I'm going to have to put in a battery properly and we'll look at the next video, Compact Flash, maybe GoTech. Retro Marquee, out.